it says do you waive your rights to view this document so now it gives you the option to not waive your rights and it makes it look as if you know it's Welcome to my channel. My name is Esther if you're stopping by for the first time and if you already know me, welcome back. So um, today, um, as you can see in the title, I'm going to be talking about or I'm going to be going over the application process with Coalition and um, basically this is the new system that Barry is using and I think it's so awesome because you don't have to worry about like the price you have to pay to send your package and whatever. So I'm just going to go straight into it and um, yes. I'm excited to do this with you guys. Uh, let me get started on that. So I would just be sharing my computer screen with you guys so that we can go through this together. So we're just gonna come to the application website here. If you already have, I mean, if you're applying to Berea, I would imagine that you've already seen this website before. But if you haven't, if it's your first time, um, an easy way to get access to that would be to just type in Berea College international admission or international state admission and you would see it pop up so when you're here you just click the first link usually it's the first link but if not whatever you see you know just wait to, to find this one and you just click it and it will take you to that page that we're using so pretty much that and if you scroll down it shows you the things that you're going to need so even before you begin the application at least you know you have to get those things eventually so this is the international application for admission which is the online form we're filling and then you need to have your personal essay, you need to have your school records, your recommendation forms, your financial resource confirmation form, and a copy of any of the exams you're turning in, or maybe you're turning in more than one, whichever one, just needs to have that ready. Um, so then we're just going to go straight to application. So we're going to click apply for free. So we land on the home page for the application stuff. And these are just some information about Berea that you can read through if you're interested. But we're just going to go to start application. Uh, so we're just going to create an account. So I already put in my email address. I put in um, a password and we're going to put in a password again. Then your personal information like your name, last name and um, date of birth and we go on to agree and we create our account okay yeah so let me see we're gonna go check our gmail for the confirmation email by your account verify click and after doing that we just land here telling us our account has been created and then we go to log in and then just log in All right, so here it says welcome tell us about yourself we're going to be students because we're students <laughs> we're applying and continue um, then we land on the welcome page okay so what is your current enrollment status I mean you can choose high school you can choose not currently enrolled in school if you're in high school currently um, you, it means that you would have to have graduated by the time you're going to Berea so you can be in high school now but you're going to have your transcripts later to turn it in you just choose whatever applies to you and in my case I'm just going to choose not currently enrolled in high school because that was my situation during the time that I applied so uh, she's not currently enrolled and have you graduated we're gonna say yes have you earned any college credits no so if you have you can say yes but in my case i did it i did do a program which is kind of like basically called a pre-degree program and it's advanced credits but i didn't use my transcript for that program i wasn't going to use it so i already knew one i said no at the time that i applied so i'm saying no here and we're moving forward are you a u.s citizen i'm gonna say no because i'm an international student applying permanent resident no next so basically they're telling us we're international first year applicants and uh, we're just going to go next. The schools we're applying to, we're going to choose Berea because that's what we're doing and then we'll add to list. If you're applying to other schools via coalition, then like the schools that use coalition, you get to select that. But here I'm just doing Berea. Um, so we'll move on to the next step. 
um, so this is the locker where you can add your files and all of that stuff so you can just read through it when you're doing yours um, it's just showing you that you would have your list of colleges in the colleges section and you can get help as well we we'll just go next get started so the first thing we want to do is to work on our profile of course this one it requires your basic information it's already put in my first name and then I'm not okay do I have to put a middle name yeah you can put your middle name and if you don't have one you can click I don't have a legal middle name but I did when I I put my middle name when I applied so we're just gonna put that right there um last name is there then if you go by a different first name you can put that there you know they care about those things here <laughs> Um, pronouns, she, female, woman, um, other names, you can put that. Do you have a social security number? No, because you only get a social security number if you're resident in the United States. So if you're not resident in the United States, definitely do not have a social security number. You only get that when you come here. United States Armed Forces, none. Not currently enrolled, it already filled that in for me. When did you graduate from high school? So let's just say 2020, July 2020. I'll just put that there. Have you taken college courses past high school graduation? Um, no. Um, what year do you plan to begin? 2022 because you're applying for the year after. Do you intend to apply for need-based aid? No. That automatically applies if you're applying to Korea. Um, here it's just asking if you've been affected by the COVID pandemic in different ways so you can select whichever would apply to you you can say I lost my job you can say I had unreliable access to the internet whatever whatever so I'm not sure why they're asking that but it's optional like they said you don't have to select it I'm not going to select that are you participating in a community-based organization let's see what that means here it says it's a group if you belong to a group that basically provides free assistance for your college application process and all of that stuff so if you do belong to one that you know you want to write about you can select yes but i'm going to say no um so we're going to move to contact info asking for my phone number i'm just going to use my nigerian phone number in this case because you know i'm acting like i'm applying for nigeria so that you guys can get the full experience right it's two three four Number, I remember my Nigerian number. Let's see. 08061203. Province here. See, this is why I wanted to choose Nigeria because when you say province, like Nigeria doesn't have province, for example, but in this case, I just put my state, which is Lagos. So that's why I'm so glad I chose Nigeria so that you guys can actually get to see the full experience. If I chose my American, you know, location, if I chose America, it would show me states. But obviously that doesn't apply to the thing here like it doesn't apply if you choose Nigeria so it's better to see what it really is like um, that they're showing us province instead of state um postal code right there mailing address if you want to add a mailing address if it's different from your home address you can select here and then you're allowed to um, actually enter a mailing address but for me it's not different so I'm not gonna take that State of residency, not applicable. Basically, I think the state of residency is here because it's possible for you to live in the state under a different kind of visa and you're not a you know permanent resident or you're not a citizen either. So you could just be here under your parents or whatever, your parents' visa. And so in that case, your state of residency can be an American state. But in my case, I'm applying straight from Nigeria, so I'm gonna say not applicable. Then demographics. Are you Hispanic or Latino? No. You know what to select if you are. Then black. I am Sub-Saharan African black. Primary language, Yoruba. My language is there, so that looks good. Um, you can add another language if you want. And citizenship. Do you hold a current US visa? No. If you hold a current US visa, it could be a tourist visa, it could be any other kind of visa. Like I said, maybe if you're under your parents and whatever, you can select the kind of visa that you have. Then, have you been approved to receive um, DACA status? No. DACA is basically, um, I think it means the deferred action for childhood um, something. 
I'll just put it in there underneath so that you guys can see what it is. But basically, it just applies to people that um, maybe children of migrants who came here like without any visa status. And so DACA status is to protect those children. And so if you have DACA status, you will know if you have it. But if you're not in the States, you probably do not have DACA status. And we move on to family information. Um, here it says who is in your household. I'm gonna choose parents and siblings because at the time we had my brother at home and my mom. So household size, I'm gonna choose three. Let me really see. I think it's yeah, it's pretty much people that your family is supporting at the time. Okay, so it's not like your siblings that are out of the home if they're not being supported. This is about the people currently in the home that are being supported by the household. So I'm saying three here. With whom do you live permanently? I live with um, my parent, that's one parent because my dad was, um, he had passed away at the time I applied, so. Um, parents, guardians, marital status, widowed. So parent guardian one, which is the person I'm living with, that's my mom, I'm gonna put in her details. Her email address, I have my mom's email, but there's just no point putting it because I'm not applying. You put your parents email if you want and if your parents do not have an email you can put your email address it's totally fine parents address is same as my home address country code nigeria same thing so i'm just gonna go straight to that and um so here i give you the option to also add another parent which in this case would be my dad um so i would add him even though um i would say he's deceased okay please check if deceased and um, I would add his name. I think this is a choice. You don't have to add two parents if you do not want to add two parents. So I'm gonna add my dad. Okay, so siblings, I'm gonna add my brother because he was the one that was home with me. Um, high school info. Um, US high school, nope, non-US high school. If you were homeschooled, you get to select that as well. So, um, a country to begin searching I'm gonna select Nigeria of course for my high school um, my school is not going to be on this list because it's a pretty um, small school so I would say school not found and then they would ask me to enter my school information by hand um, there we go country Nigeria again so I put in the province already, which is Lagos, and then I put in the postal code, I put in the date of starting, which I just counted six years back. And whatever date you started at your school, you select, and then the day of graduation. And so in this place, um, if, you have, if you haven't graduated from high school, you know, if you're still attending, you can estimate your date of graduation. So here, if it's an exam-based school, it's asking you basically, there's some schools where, you know, it's very like competitive. And you require like an exam to get in like you have to pass an exam to get in and whatever so if your school is that type of school you get to select yes or no but my school wasn't like you could just get in you don't need to pass an entrance exam or whatever so you can select yes or no how are classes scheduled at the school in nigeria classes are scheduled like three terms per year so i'm choosing trimester this school uses block scheduling yes so um, I'm selecting yes because according to what I looked at, block scheduling basically means like if you're not like you don't take the same classes like every single day I think or whatever. So there are certain days you take certain classes and certain days you don't take certain classes. Grading scale, I'm gonna choose letters. I think it's just easier to choose letters like because you use numbers even though you use letters like you know for your grades. So I'm just gonna choose letters. Um, graduating high school. Select your graduate in high school, Joyceville, most recent academic year. Um, so this would be my 12th grade year. Let me see what else is asking. Yeah, so most recent academic year, which is in 12th. Okay, so it's asking if it's like 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th or 12th. So which is in 12th year, um, GPA type. Well, my school does not report GPA, so I'm not going to choose otherwise. My school doesn't report GPA because if you do choose that your school reports GPA and it doesn't, it's going to ask you for a GPA. So choose whatever applies to you. So now it's asking me for my 12th grade coursework. Um, 
so basically you get to add the classes that you've taken um, during your 12th grade so in my case I'm just gonna do add 12th grade classes I'm not gonna go through every single thing I'm just gonna add one class for example so I'm choosing a regular high school class if you like have a different coursework that you did you know maybe advanced class a level and whatever you get to select that but it wouldn't be 12th grade I think so just select whatever works for you but that would be regular subject area let's just do math um class so these are the list of math classes and it basically splits them into like algebra statistics and all but in Nigeria we do not split our math classes like that math is math you know it's when you're in a class that you actually split the um, content of the class so I'm just gonna choose math other and I'm gonna choose the name of the class and transcript which is just mathematics um, I took this class at college or received college credit no um, grading scale let's see letter grading skill yeah how was this class scheduled trimester yes during which trimester did you take all trimesters because we took it every time in the school year um, then how is the grade for this class reported on your transcript so I think if I remember correctly yeah it's one grade per term because I have a transcript from like all years of my high school and each year had three terms with a grade format each time so I'm gonna choose one grade per term um, so you're just gonna choose whatever applies to you in that case trimester one grade mm, we're gonna put all A's okay I don't remember what my grade was but we're just gonna put all A's this class occurred during the regular school year save and close alright so we've done that and you will do that for every class that you took that you want to add um, in here it says you have any AP exams you wish to report so this would be if you did like advanced placement so um, for my case no I did not have any do you have any IB exams nope this would be like international baccalaureate exam or whatever it's called so I don't have that it applies to some people do you have any A-level exams okay so I think this is kind of like the AP stuff well no then next English test so I'm gonna say yes because I took the IELTS at the time um, it says how many results for Duolingo do, do you wish to report I'm gonna say one so I'll say IELTS highest total score I think at the time was 7.5 so if you haven't re received your scores yet but you're gonna receive it later before you submit your application you can just say I've not received my scores yet I think and so you can probably come back to edit it later are you planning on taking any exam you know any of these exams again no okay so we're gonna move on to additional information <laughs> do you have any additional information you would like to share no let's see if I said yes what would you say you do okay so it just asks you to type it in if you have a specific thing you want to say you can write that but I'm choosing no because I don't 9th to 11th grade coursework so basically you do the same thing that you did for your 12th grade um, 12th grade coursework the in college information if you've attended college search for your college and add attendance information no I haven't attended college moving on <laughs> Okay, completed coursework. Next thing is asking us for SAT, ACT. If you have SAT scores that you would like to report, you can, you know, select that. For SATs, you basically do not upload your results in the on the thing according to what I see. There is a process here. It says to send your test scores. So I think there it would ask you to like put in your information because I'm not doing that. I did not take the SAT in my time so I don't know what the experience is like. It wants you to go to the um, college board to enter your SAT information but I'm not doing that. So I'm going back to, I just wanted you guys to see what that looks like. And this is basically for you guys to know like if you do not have SAT and you only have um, you only have IELTS or TOEFL or whatever 
you do not need to have your SAT to get into Berea. It kind of might, might I think, help with maybe, let's say there's two people that are very similar, like that's like you and somebody else. But the only thing that sets you guys apart is your SAT score. Maybe it can help you why they'll choose you over the other person. But I didn't have it and I'm here. So I'm not going to let that stop me if I were in your shoes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do not have ACT either. I'm not planning on taking it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Fee waiver. Um, this doesn't apply to Berea College. So if it applies to any other school you're applying to, you can you know work with this so we're just gonna say none of these apply to me because we don't need that for Berea College. Berea College doesn't have an application fee anyways so we move on to the honors section if you have any honor or distinction that you want to list please go ahead and list it okay but we're gonna move forward academic interests okay so this is where you choose what you want to study in college So I'm choosing biology, I'm choosing pre-vet, we can say pre-med if you're pre-med, whatever. Just choose whatever works for you. And then I'm going to go to activities. And here, basically you're going to add your extracurricular experiences. So let me just say volunteer work, right? That's just something that comes off the top of my head. Volunteer work, I'm just going to say activity. Um, volunteered at a preschool description i'm just gonna write something quickly so as i said a teacher with preschoolers you can write it in like bullet form i think you know whatever works for you we can say um ensured the safety of where is it of preschoolers on the playground you know just whatever you can write as your um experience and you can see here for a tip maybe it says for example if you relate to playing a musical instrument you can say i play violin at all county level so whatever you want to write as your description you can do that when did you have this experience i'm just gonna say from my 11th and 12th grade and you can say post high school as well how many weeks per year did you participate in this activity let's say 20 weeks just random guys hours per week on the high end let's say 10 hours so in this kind of situation i think you can just give an estimate because i'm not sure that people always keep track of something like that so you can give an estimate which is why i'm just saying 10 hours per week on the low end let's say week five hours um, but if you do keep track of your hours, that's easy. You just type it in there. Um, list any individual distinctions. Feel free to list that. Are you involved in a leadership role? Yes. You know, we want to list all those things. Leadership title. I'm not going to list a leadership role here because I can't think of any leadership role related to volunteering at a preschool. But if you have one, like in one of my other videos, I think it was actually in my video about personal statements, I talked about, you know, being involved in a um, Christian organization. So, and I was uh, involved in a leadership position during that time. So if I was talking about that, I would click yes and I would put my leadership title, which was like a, you know, youth leader or whatever, something like that. Uh, so I'm just going to say no, just so we can move forward. Coalition essay. This one, people are always asking me about it, right? According to what is on my coalition's website, they do not submit your coalition essay to schools that do not require it. If you read here, it says complete the section to apply to 49 coalition colleges. So basically, these are the schools that require the coalition essay. If you are not, you know, applying to any of the schools, you do not need to write the coalition essay because they're not going to submit it to those schools and if you're unsure you can call Berry College or send an email to ask them but as far as I'm concerned according to the information we can even look it up real quickly so if we come here on my coalition and we read their website it says that the coalition essay will not be submitted to colleges that don't require it as a part of the application but maybe um 
if you want to be just want me to be sure um, you can ask me in the comment section and I would have gone to the school's admission office or like call them and just confirm so we're gonna go back to overview and the next phase it's um, the locker right so basically this is for you to upload any files right any file that you want to upload for your application but in this case we haven't moved on to the Berea College um, application yet basically we're not going to upload anything yet and we can go to colleges so build college list we already have Berea College on the list and now we're going to start our Berea College application officially but look guys They've already done the bulk of the work because we've already filled in our personal information so you're not going to have to type all of that again. So, um, international first year applicant, continue. So, we can start application. Okay, so we're going to go with the first part, the profile. Um, I think it's already kind of shared everything, the same information that we entered before. There's no need to go through that now. You can cross check later. And the next thing after profile is term. Okay, so it says choose your term. We're starting for 22. That's the only option for Korea anyways. Okay, so now this is the part for adding your documents to the Berea College application. It says please add the documents you'd like to use with this application. You can either choose the document you already have in your locker or you request a new one. If you request a new document, it will be added to this application and saved in your locker for future use. So you could have added it in your locker in the first place, but I just wanted us to get here. We're going to click request new academic recommendation. And you just basically enter the email address of the person that you want to, you know, want them to ask for this. That person is going to have access to like, you know, the information that they need to give you a recommendation. So we can just enter whatever. Let me add my email address just for the sake of it. And then we move on to continue. And then first name, you put the person's name. I'm just gonna put whatever name there. <laughs> and then continue. Now, this part is very important. It says, do you waive your rights to view this document? So now, it gives you the option to not waive your rights. And it makes it look as if you know it's okay if you want to read what the person said about you it's not bad guys it actually is bad because um, it makes it look like okay so you do not trust what this person is gonna say about you and at the same time you do not trust yourself you know you do not trust what they're gonna say about you as a person or as a student whatever so um, the best advice in this case is to actually waive your rights to view the document so that that way you're not gonna see what the person says about you here now if you have a very good relationship with the person that's writing your recommendation letter for you they might choose to invite you to read it read whatever they say about you before they post it here i've had instructors do that for me they send it to me they're like oh esther how do you feel about this do you think it's okay if you have a good relationship with the person writing your recommendation letter and they're very very open like that they will let you see it but officially waive your rights to view it so that there's no weird feelings about you so we're gonna click i leave my rights so continue and we're gonna choose request academic recommendation close so basically you have to do that for two people and the other part by the way it says if you do not send your recommendation letter online you make sure you send everything by mail because some people might you know have recommenders that do not do like computer like they do not write stuff on a the computer they do not have an email address so that means that you have to send everything by the 30th, you have to send the um, document by mail by the 30th. As long as it's sent by the 30th, you're going to be fine. So, continue. Okay, so this part, we're going on to the um, marital status, single, your number of children. If you have children, feel free to put that there, but here I'm going to say zero. Gender identity, female. Upon completion of your studies, do you intend to return to your home country to leave? Yes. Guys, if you want me to explain this in here, I'm not going to do that because it's just going to make the video extremely longer. I've talked about this in my personal statement video, what I said I was going to return to my country. So please feel free to go watch that video to understand why I did this. If you want, you can choose no, I don't wish to return to my home country, but I chose yes. Um, choose one major from the list below. 
So here I did choose pre-meds during my application and eventually when I came to the college I understood that I had to choose a specific major even though I was pre-med. Please list the name of other colleges you're applying to. When I applied to Berry College, I did not apply to any other college, so I did not choose anything here. If you're applying to other colleges, I think you can write it there. If you feel doubtful about it, where you feel like maybe it might affect your chances in Berry College, like maybe they won't want to pick you, you don't have to write it. You have the choice to not write it. But I know people who are in Berry College now who listed the schools they're applying to, so I really cannot say for the admission office if that affects your chances or not. So I'm just gonna leave that blank. Are we taking the SAT? No. The ACT? No. Duolingo exam? No. TOEFL? No. IELTS? Yes. That was the exam I wrote. Highest listening score, I'm just gonna put in the same thing here. Reading score, have you earned a bachelor's degree or higher? No. If you're applying to Berea, you cannot have a degree still. Have you previously visited states? No. If you have, put whatever you, you know, applies to you there. Are you currently residing in the states? No. Do you have any immediate relatives? No. If you do, you choose it. What is the marital status of your parents? We don't. Okay, so it says one parent living, one parent deceased, yes. Um, family member info, please list the following for any member of your household in the boxes below. So the first person would be self, age, 24, occupation, students, and then my mom, and then the last person would be my brother. Okay, so it says the primary source of family income is, we're going to say family owned business. What is your family's total annual income? I'm just gonna choose, uh, what can we say? I'll just say $5,000. I'm gonna make a different video about income because I don't wanna start explaining all of that here. It's gonna make the video really long. It's just a content for another video because people do have questions about how much is too much money and things like that. Most times it's probably gonna be little compared to the American's average annual income in terms of like what's middle class, what's lower class. So just add whatever your family's income is. I'm just gonna add 5,000 there. Does your family own a house? Yes. And then we put the value of the house as well. Um, I cannot remember how much it was, but I'm just gonna add um, that. For the next three questions, give the present value for land and buildings, other things that you, your family has. So I'm just gonna put random things Savings, I can just say 5,000. Investment, zero. Does your family own automobiles? At the time, no. How much does your family spend on educational costs each year? For me, at the time, I don't know, I don't remember what I wrote at the time, guys. So you just put whatever your family spends on um, educational costs, maybe for your siblings or for you if you're still in school and so i'm just gonna put 1000 does the family employ other people yes so in the home zero in the family business let's just say five how much support will you receive from your family each year so this one you do not have to write anything because people ask me about this a lot as well you do not have to add anything if your family is not going to give you anything. And if they're going to give you something, if it's $1,000, you type it there. If it's 2000 if it's nothing, you write it there. But it's not going to affect your chances at all. Because Berea is not even ex expecting you to receive any money. You understand what I'm saying? So let's just write 1000 I think when I applied, I did put something there. I think I probably put 1000 Oh, so. Do you have a sponsor? Yes if you do not have a sponsor if it's just you doing everything by yourself feel free to say no in addition to visa fees and travel you'll be required to make a deposit of two thousand two fifty if you're offered admission blah 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 so what sorts of funds will you use to make this deposit um i would say family business that was what i said during my time how much can you deposit Guys, this one, people always ask me as well. <laughs> you write the amount you can. If it's $200, you write it. If it's $100, you write it. I don't know if you can put zero. Maybe you can put zero. I've not met anyone that I recall saying they didn't write anything. But, you know, it doesn't matter how much you put. You do not have to pay the 22050 
I did because I thought that I had to. If I knew that we didn't have to, I would have just put whatever money was easier for us to afford. But I put it because I thought that they were just asking like a trick question. I try to like sift people out, you know, the people that can pay will come, the people that can't pay will not come. But it's not true. I know people who pay like 300 and they got admitted as well. So it really does not matter at all. Personal statement of financial circumstances. I'm not going to talk about this here because it's going to be extremely long but basically this would probably be like a paragraph or two just explaining your financial situation in my time i think i recall talking about how you know my dad passed away it affected our finances blah 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 so feel free to write what you think here um okay so if you want to transfer your credits or whatever this applies to you so i'm just gonna say i've read and understood that but I did not transfer any credits. That thing just really makes situations complicated. Especially if you're international students. International students transferring credits is not straightforward at all. So, but if you want to take the risk, please feel free. I did not do that. Okay, so personal statement. I'm just going to put an A right there because I'm not going to write all of that. Continue. We finally get here. <laughs> international personal essay guys we've gone through this go watch my video if you have it go watch my video if you have it <laughs> but yeah this is basically about your personal essay you just attach your document here when you're done okay and it's necessary for you to do this part okay official test scores you also here can add your test results here international financial resources form um this one you get to download the form here right you get to download the form here and you fill in your personal information for financial resources i'm going to have to make another video about that it's going to make this video extremely long sorry guys i just cannot do that <laughs> then academic records you know upload all your transcripts everything you upload them here then replacement academic recommendations so it says if your recommenders are unable to use the coalition system or do not have an email address and you have a paper recommendation form or a letter please upload both of them here to complete your application please combine multiple pages into a single pdf before uploading so this is the recommendation form that i had to fill during my time so you can just print this so yeah it says this form should be returned to the applicant and be uploaded to the coalition for college application. Okay, so I guess in this case, you do get to see what the person writes about you. Haha, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> so that's one thing I guess that Bray really doesn't care about in this case. When I applied, no, you cannot just upload it because you're not posting it online. When I applied, you have to give the person this form and you would have to put it in a sealed um, envelope. So you basically did not get to read it, and except they showed you. But uh, here now you can see it because you get to upload it by yourself. Okay, the next one it says upload um, optional additional information. So you can upload your resume. I uploaded my resume because it was just nice to do that. And also apparently if you upload your resume, it actually helps them to place you in a specific job position in your freshman year. So if you do not upload a resume and they don't, or even if you do and they don't see a skill that's much needed, for them to place you somewhere then they might not use it to place you anywhere special but let's say you have vast experience in like computer science and things like that then or like technology then if you upload that in your resume they'll probably place you in the tech center from your freshman year or if you're going to be a computer science major so i think they will place you in the tech center but if you or maybe you have a vast experience in like farming and whatever and right, you have that in your resume they can place you on the form but you know it's not necessary it's optional it's just something that is good it can help you in job placement as well okay and it says additional letters of recommendation i did add additional re letters of recommendation during my application those letters of recommendation were actually written like a long time ago before the time that i applied to Berea college um so i just like used it and i just added it from my high school because it's just nice there's never too much positive information about you <laughs> okay so you get to add that and then we can continue hey it doesn't want me to continue because i did not add it okay guys i'm just gonna add <laughs> random documents from my 
from my computer <laughs> all right so i've attached all the documents the random documents that i wanted to attach so that i can move forward but also guys i wanted to mention about the resume and all the documents i remember that for additional documents i added like random things such as like my dad's death certificate my family like um you know property information i just added all those things just so it can back up everything that i said i added awards that i earned like during my high school journey my junior high school awards i added all those things um, what else did i add i added my certificate from fashion school i added my certificate from french school so basically i was just adding everything that i could add to support the statement that i've made in my personal essay and just me as a person because all these things really help it makes them also know like oh this person is not just talking this person actually has proof to back up everything that they're saying about themselves so we're gonna continue so it says application fee is zero of course and then the deadline is november 30th you must complete the following profile section to submit your application did i not complete it let me check i think citizenship information I thought I did. Maybe I skipped it by mistake. So, I think we're done. I'm not gonna click this part because I'm not applying to Bria College. <laughs> I'm not about to let them think I'm crazy. So, anyways, this is the end, and this is where you just click submit your application. That's it. That's it. That's it for Bria College application. Um, and I think that's where it gives you the hundred percent because then you're done with everything. And here it only says 98% for your progress but when you submit you have 100% basically this is everything with applying to Bria College if you have any questions concerning this old video please feel free to comment in the comment section like this video okay guys like this video comment subscribe don't just watch and go you gotta subscribe I will see you all in my next video thank you for watching I'm